캐나다의 정치 철학가 윌 킴리카는 다문화주의 연구 분야의 세계적 석학입니다. 민족 갈등의 해결책을 제시한 그의 책들은 34개국 언어로 번역돼 전 세계에 영향을 미쳤죠. 퀸스 대학교 재학 시절 캐나다에서 토착민이 얼마나 부당한 대우를 받아왔는지 알게 된후 40년 가까이 소수민족과 다수민족의 평화로운 공존법을 연구해온 윌킴리카. 이미 다문화 사회에 깊숙이 들어와 민족 갈등을 겪고 있는 우리에게 오늘 그는 어떤 해답을 들려줄까요? Welcome to We d e h a n Suap Great Minds. I'm Will k i m l i k a Professor and Canada Research Chair in Political Philosophy at Queen's University. How we can have societies that are diverse uh, and still be successful in terms of prosperity, democracy, peace, uh, and solidarity. Uh, in one sense, that's a perennial question. Human beings for centuries, for millennia, uh, have encountered people of different backgrounds. But I think the challenge of diversity today in modern societies is quite different and quite distinct. Uh, and I think this, this centrality that we've given to, to the nation in the modern world creates a tension uh, with diversity. We can think of this that there's really a kind of uh, conflict between two big trends of contemporary societies. On the one hand, for the past 200 years, or so, we live in what we can call the era of nationalism. So if we go back uh, beyond 200 years, we go 300 years or more, so we had a mixture of kingdoms and principalities, city-states, empires, protectorates, colonies, uh, just this huge kind of smorgasbord of different kinds of political communities. Uh, none of which really were organized on the idea of nationhood. Uh, and over the past 200 years, they've all basically been replaced with the idea of the nation state. And so the world is organized into these nation states, which have as one of their goals, the inculcation of a shared national identity, a shared national loyalty, national solidarity, so countries try to persuade us that we're all Koreans, we're all Canadians, we're all Danes or Germans. Uh, and so nation states try to inculcate this shared sense of belonging together, that we all form a we together. So that's one big trend uh, towards the kind of the nationalization of politics. But uh, there's a second trend which runs in the different direction. Over the past 50 or 60 years in particular, we live in what some people call the era of multiculturalism. In which a whole range of different kinds of groups uh, have insisted on respect for their group differences and often demanded different kinds of minority rights. And so, a variety of groups have said, we're different from you, and we want to be recognized and acknowledged as being different from you. So we have, we have a, a trend towards national homogenization, if you like, the creation of a shared sense of national identity, and on the other hand, a trend towards the demand for recognition of difference. Uh, these are typically seen as, as contradictory trends, and those people who care about nationalism tend to view multiculturalism as a threat, uh, as a threat to national unity. And on the other hand, multiculturalists tend to view nationalism as a threat, as a denial of, of difference. Uh, my own view, however, is that we can and should try to reconcile nationalism and multiculturalism. We need both. We need something like a multicultural nationalism. And I, I should say right off the bat that my interest in this topic uh, almost certainly reflects the fact that I am myself a Canadian. And this is an issue of real significance historically for Canada. It's been a kind of existential question for Canada since its origin. So the, the origins of Canada as a country uh, was an agreement between the English and the French.
uh, the two big colonizers of Canada. And so from the beginning, Canada was built on linguistic duality, the French and English uh, languages. But both the French and the English had to live together with the indigenous peoples who lived here before the Europeans arrived. And so we've also had to deal with issues of indigenous peoples. And since uh, the founding of Canada, the country has been built through immigration. And so we have uh, admitted into Canada people from all over the world, initially from Europe, but most, more recently primarily from Asia. And so there's been a recognition in Canada that if we're going to succeed as a country, if we're going to survive as a country uh, le and succeed as a country, we need to do so uh, by embracing our diversity. And so Canadians have been quite obsessed for a long time, actually, with this question of how you can build a sense of national identity and national solidarity while respecting diversity. But I don't think it's just a Canadian problem or concern. As I look around the world, I think many countries uh, face a similar challenge about how to embrace diversity without abandoning or eroding national identities and solidarities and loyalties. Mm -hmm.